In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, hello everyone and welcome to this edition of RYN in English News with me, Nemo Chitsos. The Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, says we have to use the knowledge and power of the lawyers to confront the United States' economic war against the Iranian nation. In a meeting with lawyers and legal practitioners on Wednesday, that falls on the 10th day of the holy month of Ramadan, President Hassan Rouhani said the United States sanctions against the Iranian nation as a crime against humanity. The president went on to say the biggest and strongest power and might to defend the Islamic establishment is the Iranian nation. The head of Iran's judiciary system says, in order to create a transformation, we need the thought and contemplation of all the elite of the society, as well as the society and public. In a meeting with the representatives of university students' formations, Hujat al-Islam al muslim Ibrahim Raisi on Wednesday said, being aware of the viewpoint and listening to the critical voices of the authorities, judges, lawyers, law practitioners, elite, and the people is an essential matter. He pointed out that a political student is not a term to be used only for the ones that are part of a political current. Hujat al-Islam al muslim in Raisi went on to say, a political student understands the needs of the society and acts accordingly. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has arrived in the Japanese capital city of Tokyo at the invitation of his Japanese counterpart. The Iranian top diplomat is to hold talks with the Japanese Foreign Minister Taro Kono as well as Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe on Thursday morning. Mohammad Javad Zarif headed for Japan after visiting Turkmenistan and India as part of his efforts to boost the Islamic Republic's relations. The first blood stem cells transplant on an HIV-positive patient has been carried out with success in the Islamic Republic of Iran, making the surgery the first ever achievement in the country, as well as in the Middle East. Iranian Research Center for HIV AIDS says the transplant was conducted on a 44-year-old patient two weeks ago. However, the name of the hospital where the transplant was conducted has not been revealed. According to reports, fortunately, this transplant was successful and the patient has been discharged from the hospital. The nameless patient will be under medical control within the next three months. According to Iranian Research Center for HIV AIDS, such transplant will have positive impact on the process of controlling the HIV virus. According to reports, some 200 HIV-positive patients seek health services for counseling each month at Iranian Research Center for HIV AIDS, which put the official number of HIV patients at 40,000. However, unofficial figures show that the number of HIV-positive in the country will be more than the registered figures. At the 70th meeting of the Council on Railway Transport of the Commonwealth Member States and Baltic States held in the Finnish capital of Helsinki, Iran's membership as observer has changed to a permanent member of this council with the approval of all members. The meeting was attended by delegates from Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Georgia, Latvia, Finland, Lithuania, Estonia, Iran, and Ukraine. 
The meeting discussed a wide range of issues, including the operational work of the combined railway network and international passenger traffic in 2018 and in the first quarter of 2019. The meeting ended with the adoption of a number of documents, in particular 2019 and 2020 train timetable development standards. The Council on Railway Transport of CIS and Baltic States was formed in 1992 and headquartered in Russia. Russian President Vladimir Putin says Iran has the most transparent nuclear program in the world while the most inspections were carried out in this regard. During a press conference on Wednesday after meeting Austrian President Alexander von der Bellen in Suchi, Putin said the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, that is the IAEA, Putin said, the Director General said uh, that Iran has adhered to all its commitments to implement the nuclear deal, officially known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or the JCPOA, Putin said. While Moscow believes the deal should be preserved, it can be saved only through the efforts of all its signatories. Speaking at the same joint press conference, Van der Bellen also slammed the United States sanctions against Iran by saying such policies do not help international relations and only erode the system of global treaties. More than 60 Palestinians have been injured in the besieged Gaza Strip as Zionist regime forces attacked the protesters marking the 71st anniversary of the Nakba Day, or the Day of Catastrophe. The spokesman for the Gazan Health Ministry said 65 Palestinians, including 22 children and 5 women, were injured during the protests on Wednesday. Most of those injured were hit by live bullets. Ashraf al Qatra further said the Israeli forces also targeted the medical personnel, hitting three paramedics by rubber bullets. Similar rallies were also held in the occupied West Bank city of Ramallah. The Nakba Day is marked annually on May 15. It refers to the forcible expulsion of some 700,000 Palestinians from their lands following the creation of Israel in 1948 and their scattering across refugee camps in the West Bank, Gaza, and neighboring countries. Tensions have been running high near the fence, separating Gaza from the occupied territories since March 30, which marked the start of a series of protests called the Great March of Return. Palestinian protesters demand the right to return for those driven out of their homeland. More than 300 Palestinians have been killed since then, and over 17,300 have been injured. Gaza has been under the Zionist regime siege since June 2007, which has caused a decline in living standards. Yemeni army forces supported by Allied fighters from popular committees have intercepted and targeted an unmanned aerial vehicle belonging to the Saudi regime-led military coalition as it was flying in the skies over a region in the country's western central province of Sana'a. An unnamed Yemeni military source said Yemeni air defense forces and their allies shot down the United States-built MQ-1 Predator combat drone with a surface-to-air missile late on Tuesday. The source added the unmanned aerial vehicle was brought down as it was on a mission in skies over Dayan area in the Bani Matar district of the province. Also on Tuesday, Yemeni troops and popular committee fighters thwarted an infiltration attempt by the Saudi regime-backed militiamen loyal to the former Yemeni president Abad Rabba Mansour Hadi and the country's northern province of Al-Jof killing and injuring scores of mercenaries in the process. The Yemeni army soldiers and their allies also targeted the position of the Saudi-paid militiamen on the outskirts of Assadis military base 
and Saudi Arabia's southern province of Najran. A number of Saudi regime mercenaries were killed and wounded as a result. On that note, we come to a wrap of this edition of RYN in English News. Join us at the same time, same place with the latest updates. Till then, take care and have a very great time. Goodbye now.